So it's June 2nd, which is basically the best time to start planting your garden in Wyoming because we're way past frost time and it's only getting to about 50 degrees at night now. So it's a great time to start planting your garden with whatever you want basically now because it's going to be able to grow uninterrupted the rest of the growing season and basically get the fastest crops. So the ground is warm. I've amended this bed with uh, one inch of compost and then we had a cover crop of ryegrass growing last year and into this spring that I was weed whacked um, earlier and uh, or last week and so it's breaking down that's what this straw stuff is and that'll feed the soil as we go but basically what we're going to do today is plant this whole 25 foot bed in five different sections um, five different five foot blocks that I'm going to grid out into specific plant spacing, which I'll explain later. But the goal here is we're going to try and grow $430 worth of vegetables in this tiny little bed between right now, June 2nd and September 21st. And I'll show you how that all works. We're going to document it throughout the season. If you're interested in growing a garden as productive as what I'm about to demonstrate, you could check out my gardening course at the link in the description it's called gardening 101 highly recommend you check that out because you could set up a garden exactly like this i actually demonstrate how we set up this very garden and how i plant it to get as much food as humanly possible in a tiny growing season like ours so highly recommend you check that out at the link in the description but right now i'm going to throw on the time lapse i'm going to plant this whole bed and i'll explain what i did after we're done So as you can see here, we've planted the bed and basically what I planted was celery, basil, romaine lettuce, and cabbage in this first five foot block. And the way I organized this was in five, five foot blocks on this 25 foot long bed. And each block has a specific plant spacing grid that all of the crops I planted in that block will fit in perfectly. I just know from experience that a three by 10 inch grid spacing for celery, basil, romaine, lettuce, and cabbage all works really well. And I did the same thing with each different block on this bed to get the most amount of food in the smallest amount of space. And I explained this in detail in my garden course, which is in the link in the description um and because it's kind of hard to explain in a short video like this but basically we have a couple different plant spacing on a couple of different plant spacings on this whole bed in each block that work really well for the crops that i planted we've got um, beets and green onions on what i call a three by five inch grid spacing um, and then carrots and turnips under those row covers behind me are planted direct seeded four rows for carrots six rows for turnips and uh the cabbage or the kale broccoli and cauliflower on the end are all on a two by 15 grid and i'm going to explain that uh showing you my excel sheet real quick here and then i'll come right back okay so to explain what i was doing with the crop plan sheet ahead of my hand um, this is what I actually printed off this Excel sheet 
And what I did was just map out that 25 foot bed into five foot blocks. And um, I spread it into each block having a different plant spacing and just fitting crops that I know have that plant spacing in each block. So as you can see, this first one where we planted the celery, we did a three by 10 grid and we planted celery, basil, cabbage, and lettuce in that grid, all at the same plant spacing, because I know those crops all use that spacing. And then um, green onions and beets are about the same uh, plant spacing also, and I call that a three by five grid. Um, and I explain all this in detail in my garden course. It's kind of hard to explain in a short video like this. Um, carrots, four rows, um, turnips, six rows, and cauliflower, broccoli, and kale are all uh, two by 15 grid. And so um, just so you see a little bit um, clearer in this Excel sheet, that's how I do the crop planning for the garden course and in gar gardening in general. And then on top here, um, I put the actual dollar amount for the produce you're going to get from these plant spacings and crops. So um, for our spring planting, which is what we just did, the bed with celery, basil, cabbage, and lettuce is going to yield us at least $60 in crop value if you were going to buy that stuff at the store. So we planted nine heads of celery, and that's going to be at least $3 per head. It's actually going to probably be like six because we're going to just harvest the outer stalks, but I'll show you that in a later video. Um, I actually went really conservative on all these numbers because I wanted to really demonstrate how much value there is in this tiny little space we just did. And um, basically the same for the basil, cabbage, lettuce, um, green onions. You know, you buy that at the store. One, Each one of those little plants we had was about $2 worth of green onions. Same thing you'd buy at the store. Um, and each beet plant that I planted was about uh, one to two beets. So that gets you, you know, uh, three of those plants would get you a really nice big bunch of beets. And um, carrots, I just know from experience that four rows at the seed density that I did is going to yield you about 15 pounds, which is, if you're going to buy that um, uh, organically at the store, it's roughly $3 a pound right now, maybe give or take a, a few dollars. Um, you can really wiggle that room a lot because it depends on how let, big you let the carrots get and stuff, but we're going to let them get to about a pound per, um, or we're going to get about three pounds a foot, a bed foot with this plant spacing, and that's $45. So basically by the time we hit um, July or uh, maybe August, we're going to already have produced about $233 worth of produce. And then we'll be planting a fall crop of all the things you see here, which is going to be parsley, carrots, spinach, more celery, cabbage, Napa cabbage. And what I'm demonstrating here is the potential of what you could do if you have the plants ready to go. This is how much you could produce in a very short time period. We are in Wyoming. We have 120 days to grow. And this is an example of what you can do. And I'm going to demonstrate this throughout the season so it's a lot more clear. But this is the rough crop plan. So by the end of the season, we will have produced $432 worth of produce at least. I'm betting it's going to be more than that. So um, stay tuned and hopefully that all made sense. And all of the information that I'm talking about is explained in detail in my Garden 101 course at the link in the description. Highly recommend you check that out. So for about a half an hour of work, we planted about $230 worth of produce for our spring planting here. And I used this handy dandy tool I call the planting plank, which I explain in detail how to use and how to make at home in my Gardening 101 course, which I highly recommend you check out, which is at the link in the description. But basically, this is a template for me to draw that perfect plant spacing grid pattern on every one of our blocks, our five foot blocks here in this bed. So I just use this, lay it on the bed, and I draw a grid on the, uh, the bed. But I'll explain it in detail in the gardening course. But this allows us to get really, really fast growth with all of our plants. So everything we planted today will be just off and running in no time and makes it easy for me to plant. So I'm not thinking about 
plant spacing when I throw the plants in the ground. The grid's already on the bed, and then we can also keep on top of the weeds with no problem with this grid style because I could just take a stirrup hoe, walk up and down the crops as they're growing, and any weeds that I see, I could easily get in and kill them with the stirrup hoe in about 30 seconds. So this is a super low maintenance style of gardening that produces a truckload of food in a tiny space. This is 63 square foot of garden space. Just about anybody could fit this in their backyard. Um, so it's just an incredible way to grow a lot of food in a small space. And we are gonna document on this channel the harvests that we get from this bed all season. So I highly recommend you subscribe and follow along on that journey. We'll probably be doing the first harvests, oh, in sometime in July those beets will probably be ready. And some these turnips will probably be ready around then too. So we're gonna be documenting how much food we actually produce. So I'm not just making this all up. And I will document the replanting of all the fall crops as we go. So you're gonna get almost every square inch of this bed will have two crops in it. Stuff like the kale will be harvesting all season long and that celery will harvest all season long. But I'll talk about that later. But I hope this was helpful for you in thinking about how much food you can grow in a small space and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.